Hi, I'm Steve, responding to your video. Uh, first off, it helps. Uh, I did try your idea, and it uh, didn't seem to work very well for me. So I did about an hour of reading, and I found out that it helps if, uh, first of all, you want to start out with a quality access point, like such as this one. This features uh, 802.11b and uh, 200 milliwatts of output power, as, long, as well as uh, about 10, uh, an extra uh, maybe 10 microvolts of uh, receive sensitivity over that of your average home access point. Uh, this is comparable to a Cisco 1100 which cost, uh, believe it or not, $1100. Um, okay, so you want to use a good quality access point. And also you don't want to settle, you don't want to use an 802.11g access point because they have about uh, half the range, I found. Even when you use them in total 802.11b mode, they have about half the range of a true 802.11b uh, access point radio. So starting out with a good access point, you also want to, it helps if your uh, your neighbors have, you know, 18 foot satellite dishes like this to help bounce your signals off of. So if you're in a neighborhood like, like me where you have such things, it's going to help you out immensely. Uh, what also helps if, is if you take this access point and you uh, hook it to a good quality antenna such as this one here on my home. And you'll look, uh, that's a uh, directional antenna, but up here you'll see uh, maybe at about 50 feet is a 17 foot 2.4 gigahertz. I should have used a tripod for this. I'm shaking like crazy. It's cold out here. But uh, up there at about 55 feet is a uh, 17 foot long, uh, uh, actually 19 dB gain 802.11b, or it's actually 2.4 gigahertz antenna. And we're using it with one of these access points uh, to help increase our range just a little bit. So. That's what I recommend, and uh, this is my response to your quality video. Take care and have a nice day.